So feedback, 72 to 75% chance of successful feedback. In sympathy, who's had two previous C-section, the success rate is 62 to 75%. Feedback in twin pregnancy, success rate is 45 to 84%. In previous uterine rupture, there is 5% higher chance of recurrence. For VBAC, there is 1 in 200, that's 0.5% risk of uterine rupture. 10% of patients who are booked for elective caesarean section go into labour um, less than 39 weeks. PPH minor is between 500 to 1000 uh, mils. PPH major is over 1000 mils. The major is further classified into moderate and severe. Moderate is 1000 to 2000 mils and severe is over 2000 mils. That's over 2 litres. Intraoperative cell salvage, relative reduction of blood transfusion of 38% and absolute risk, risk reduction of 21%. Shoulder dystocia, increased maternal morbidity, PPH of 11%, third and fourth degree tear of 3.8%, brachial plexus injury 2.3 to 1 point to 16%, 46% uh, are associated with substandard care, 48% occur in, um, in, um, in weight, so that's neonatal weight, of less than 4 kilos. 2 to 4 fold increased risk in diabetic mothers. Mech Roberts has a success rate of 90%. Internal manoeuvres or on all four positions, success rate is 83%. The management of third and fourth degree tear. Overall incidence is 2.9%. 6.1% occur in primary paris, 1.7% occur in multi paris. With forceps, the rate is between 8 to 12%. With one twos or vacuum delivery, the rate is between 4 to 8%. Obstetric cholestasis. Obstetric cholestasis, cholestasis pruritus, as itching in pregnancy is common affects. 23% of pregnancies, incidence of premature birth, especially iatrogenic, is increased in obstetric cholestasis um, and is 7 to 25%. Is high recurrence rate of 45 to 90% in the next pregnancy. Risk of neonatal herpes in primary episode is 41%. So primary episode of herpes risk of neonatal transmission is 41%. In recurrent genital herpes, risk of neonatal transmission is 0 to 3%. So there's a market, markedly uh, significant difference between primary and recurrent genital herpes. Risk of miscarriage following amniocentesis is 1%. Risk of miscarriage following chorionic Villa sampling is between 2.5 and 4.8%. Antenatal steroids reduce risk of neonatal death by 31%. Antenatal steroids reduce risk of respiratory distress syndrome by 44%. Antenatal steroids reduce risk of intraventricular hemorrhage by 46%. Successful rate of ECV is approximately 50%. In multiparis, it's slightly higher, 60%. In nulliparis, it's 40%. Um, it's thought to be um, due to the laxity of the ligaments and the muscles in a, in a, in a multiparis women. Um, it, it allows for, for more of a successful, um, you know, turning of the of, of the baby's um, of, of the baby's head, spontaneous reversion to breach after a successful ECV um, is is three percent. Age related risk of miscarriage. So there's different age groups, and then there is different miscarriages rate. So 
Between 12 to 19 years, the risk of miscarriage is 13%. From 20 to 24 years, the risk is 11%. Between 25 to 29 years, the risk is 12%. Between 30 to 34 years, the risk is 15%. Between 35 to 39 years, the risk is 25%. Between 40 to 44 years, the risk is 51%. And somebody who is over the age of 45 or equal to the age of 45, the risk of miscarriage is 93%. Okay, so the lowest risk of miscarriage is between the, is in the age group of 20 to 24. The highest is above 45, starts from 11% to 93%. I think this is just a very, very important figure to remember because these figures are easy SBAs in the exam. And in the part two exam, you really want to maximise your, uh, your correct answers in the SBAs um, because the EMQs are always tricky. So if you can get the maximum points in SBAs, it really gives you a good chance of um, passing the exam. 4.4% um, is the incidence of recurrent abruption. When somebody who's had one previous abruption, risk of recurrence is 4.4%. Somebody who's had two previous abruptions, risk is 19 to 25%. In somebody who is, has had a threatened miscarriage, it increases the risk of abruption from 1 to 1.4%. 1 Approximately 70% of cases of placental abruption happen in low-risk pregnancies. That's a huge number, 70% in low-risk pregnancies. Women with antiphospholipid syndrome, um, aspirin and low molecular weight heparin significantly reduce the risk of miscarriage by 54%. If DVT remains untreated, um, the risk of developing PE in these patients is 15 to 24%. So that's deep vein thrombosis and PE is pulmonary embolism. So if DVT, that's a clot in the leg, remains untreated, the risk of this developing into PE is 15 to 24%. PE during pregnancy may be fatal in almost 15% of patients. And 66% of these deaths will occur within 30 minutes of the embolic event. Some ECG abnormalities that are in inconsistent with um, PE. T-wave inversion, seen in about 21% of cases. S1Q3 T3 pattern, seen in about 15% of cases. Right bundle branch block. Okay. Placenta previa and placenta accreta. One previous cesarean section risk of placenta previa is 1%. In two previous cesarean section, the risk is 1.7%. In three previous cesarean section, the risk is 2.8%. Placenta accreta. So 11 to 14% of women with placenta previa and one previous cesarean section have risk, have, this is the risk of placenta accreta. So it's 11 to 14%. So somebody who's had placenta previa and one previous C-section, their risk of having placenta accreta is 11 to 14%. Somebody who's, had, who's got placenta previa with two previous cesarean sections, the risk of placenta accreta is 23 to 40%. With, with somebody with placenta previa and five or more previous cesarean section deliveries, the risk of placenta accreta is 67.9%. Very, very, very important figures as well. Thank you so much for listening. And if you have um, you stayed with me till the end of this presentation, I uh, would really be uh, very grateful if you could leave a comment, uh, like this video, subscribe to my channel. Um, so it supports and encourages me to do more work like this um, to help you all pass this um, the, 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 these exams. Um, as, as I've previously said, um, they are quite difficult exams, but nothing um, is is can cannot be achieved by putting in the effort, having the right content um, to look at and to get information from.
because what you want to be doing is working smart, not just hard, because um, it's only by working smart you'll be able to cover all of the syllabus that the exam wants you to cover. If you just, just work hard, you might just concentrate on a few subjects, but ignore the rest of uh, the topics that do uh, come up in this exam. So I do hope that by doing these videos, I'm able to give you the flavour and the breadth of what you need to cover for this exam. And I hope you found this useful. Thank you so much for listening.